So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to day two of the Nordic seminar, Indigenous People, Language, Culture and Life Cycle. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, yes, yes. I think so. Thank you. Uh, my name is Katarina Nega. I am a medical doctor and associate professor in geriatric medicine at Linköping University Hospital in the southeast of Sweden. Uh, I am also a member of the Nordic Dementia Network, uh, the sub-network for indigenous people and dementia in my role as a dementia doctor and dementia researcher. And as you might have guessed already by my name, I am Sami, originating from traditional Yulev Sami area in Swedish Sápmi. And I have the great pleasure of being the moderator of today's online seminar. Uh, the seminar is organized in, as a cooperation between the Nordic Welfare Center, the Nordic Dementia Network, the Council of Nordic Cooperation on Disability, the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health, the Finnish Institute for Health and Welfare, the Sami Parliament in Finland, Sami Söster, the Advisory Board for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, VANE, and the Finnish Human Rights Center. And I would like to thank all the organizers for arranging this seminar with such a great program. And uh, I also would like to welcome all you participants representing all the Nordic countries today. Uh, I think I speak for all of us uh, when I say that I think that we would all have preferred to be there together in Sayos, the Sami Culture Center and being able to experience Inari in the Finnish part of Sápmi. However, I think it's still fantastic to be able to participate in the seminar through our screens, regardless of travel restrictions and precautions forced upon us by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the program yesterday, uh, where we had the pleasure to listen to very interesting talks on high-level international human rights law and the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, representing the framework for the needed implementation of the rights of Indigenous people in different parts of our societies. Um, we could also listen to voices from the organizations of persons with disability and dementia from Greenland and Finland that emphasize the necessity of development in this field. Uh, I believe that this seminar is one step in the right direction. Today, the theme is language and culture sensitive person-centered support and services. And we will focus more on healthcare and social services more on the grassroots level, so to speak, in this specific context. We will also touch upon research. Um, we have a line of very interesting talks ahead of us this afternoon. All right, uh, uh, so now I have the great pleasure to introduce the first speaker uh, a couple of minutes ahead of time but uh, I think we'll be fine with that. So I would like to introduce uh, Sanna Ahula, who is an expert from the Human Rights Center in Finland. And the title of her presentation will be Equal Treatment and Linguistic and Cultural Rights for Persons with Disabilities, Including Dementia. Uh, please, Sanna, welcome. Thank you so much uh, and good afternoon here uh, from Sayos, Inari. Very pleased to be able to be here. Uh, 
uh, as said, uh, my topic is equal treatment and linguistic and cultural rights for persons with disabilities. And uh, when I started preparing my speech, I soon realized that it's uh, uh, actually all about belonging or not belonging to a certain group with all the advantages and uh, disadvantages that come with this uh, belonging. So I came up with these questions. Uh, do indigenous persons have the same cultural and linguistic rights uh, as the majority population? Uh, do persons with disabilities have the same rights to participation and independent living as other people? And do they get the necessary services to enjoy those rights? Uh, does the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities apply to persons with dementia or other memory-related disease? Uh, and what rights do you have if you are in an indigenous person with a memory-related disease? Uh, it's obviously not possible to answer uh, all these questions uh, in one speech of 20 minutes, but uh, I will, however, um, talk about uh, the, a little bit about the fundamental and uh, human rights uh, structure and uh, the Finnish nas national legislation that gives us some uh, guidance uh, in these topics. Uh, I have narrowed uh, the scope of uh, this presentation on social and uh, health services. Oops. Uh, I will just say a few words uh, of my, uh, about my organization. So uh, I come from the Human Rights Center uh, from Finland. Uh, and our task is uh, to promote and moni monitor the implementation of fundamental and human rights in Finland and also increase cooperation and exchange of information between various actors. Uh, and in addition to this uh, general monitoring, uh, we also have some particular areas that we uh, work on. Uh, those are uh, especially human rights education, uh, rights of indigenous peoples, uh, business and human rights, rights of persons with disabilities, and uh, rights of older persons. Uh, the Human Rights Center is part of the Finnish National Human Rights Institution, of which uh, Gerard Quinn uh, talked a bit uh, last time, also uh, Laila Susanna mentioned our role. Uh, I will just uh, very briefly explain that uh, the National uh, Human Rights Institution here in Finland uh, constitutes of uh, three organizations. Uh, the Human Rights Center, that is us, uh, the Parliamentary Ombudsman, who uh, deals with uh, individual complaints, and the Human Rights Delegation, uh, where uh, there is discussion and initiatives on human rights issues. Uh, it has a pluralist composition, and there is also a member from the Finnish Sami parliament in the human rights delegation. So, what do we talk about when we talk about fundamental and human rights? And I know these topics have been discussed yesterday, but I still want to say a few words on them. Uh, that is, we have two sets of rights. We have fundamental rights, uh, which are rights under the national constitutions, which are guaranteed for all. Uh, they represent the central fundamental values of a democratic constitutional state, in this case Finland, <laughs> and can only be restricted by law and on specific grounds. And then we have human rights, uh, which are basic universal rights, uh, and they are protected by several international conventions. And those human rights um, conventions, uh, they set up the minimum standards that are supposed to uh, exist in every country's constitution. So they are interrelated. When we see uh, or look at the Finnish constitution, uh, there are some uh, fundamental rights uh, which regard especially health and social and health services. There is uh, equality. Uh, everyone is equal before the law. Uh, there is right to life, personal liberty, integrity and security. 
there is right to private life uh, and honoring uh, and the sanctity of the home. Uh, there is also uh, the right to vote um, and the right to participate to society. There is the right to one's language and culture, which is always, uh, of course, uh, very important for indigenous persons. I will talk about it more a little bit later. And uh, the right to social security and adequate social and health services. <laughs> Uh, then uh, the human rights. Uh, there are, of course, several human rights declarations and uh, conventions that um, uh, apply to persons with disabilities. But, of course, the most important one uh, is uh, the Convention on Rights of Persons with Disabilities, uh, the CRPD. And its purpose uh, is to promote, protect and ensure the full and equal enjoyment of all human rights and fundamental freedoms by all persons with disabilities and to promote respect for their inherent dignity. So the idea is uh, to find ways to make the traditional uh, human rights uh, apply also to persons with disabilities. Uh, guiding principles of the CRPD, well, there are many. <laughs> uh, there is a respect for uh, the dignity and individual autonomy, including the freedom to make one's own choices. Uh, there is non-discrimination, uh, full and effective participation and inclusion in society. Uh, respect for difference and acceptance of persons with disability as part of human diversity and humanity. Uh, equality of opportunity, accessibility, which is uh, at times uh, seen as a new human right, as opposed to the other rights here, uh, which are known in also other declarations and conventions. Uh, equality between men and women and respect for, for the evolving capacities of children with disabilities and respect for the right of children with disabilities to preserve their identities. So this is CRPD in a nutshell. So now we come to the questions, uh, what CRPD has to do with uh, older persons with disabilities? Uh, and the definitions of persons with disabilities in the CRPD is all about uh, functional capacity and the environment. That is, um, it does not uh, have a bearing on the medical diagnosis of a person. So in this respect, there is no reason to say uh, that dementia would not be uh, uh, that person with dementia, uh, with limited functional capacity, would not be a person uh, uh, to whom the CRPD could be applied. Uh, age is not mentioned in the definition, uh, which goes like this. Uh, persons with disabilities include those who have long-term physical, mental, intellectual or sensory impairments which in interaction with various barriers may hinder their full and e effective participation in society uh, on an equal basis with others. Uh, in 2017, uh, the UN Special Rapporteur uh, on the Rights of Persons with Disability uh, it wasn't Gerard Quinn, it was the one before, now I have forgotten the name, I'm sorry, <laughs> jointly uh, with the independent experts on the enjoyment of all human rights by older person, persons. They hosted uh, this first expert group meeting on supporting the autonomy and independency of older persons with disability uh, in New York. And this was organized with the support of the government of Finland. And in these discussions, it was discovered uh, that older persons with disabilities face exclusion, uh, multiple and intersectional discrimination uh, that led to human rights violations, such as deprivation uh, of legal capacity and institutionalization. Uh, so in this context, the CRPD was found to have the potential of advancing the rights of older persons with disabilities because it challenges uh, the substituted uh, deci decision-making regimes, involuntary treatment and institutionalization. And uh, as uh, Professor Quinn said uh, yesterday, uh, 
they are planning uh, with the new uh, independent experts on the enjoyment of all human rights by older persons, that is Claudia Mahler, uh, to continue this work next year. So we are looki looking forward to seeing what the future hold in, holds in this field. And then we have the link between the CRPD and the indigenous people's rights. Uh, in the preamble of the CRPD, uh, it said uh, that the state parties agreed to this convention, uh, concerned about the difficult conditions uh, faced by persons with disabilities who are subject to multiple or aggravated forms of discrimination on the basis of race, color, sex, language, religion, national, uh, political or other opinion, national, ethnic, indigenous or social origin, property, birth, age or other status. <coughs> there is no other mention in the treaty itself of indigenous peoples or indigenous persons, but uh, it is, however, understood in making the convention that this kind of intersectional discrimination is, uh, is happening and has to be taken into account. Uh, again, uh, in 2016, the Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and the Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples co-organized this expert meeting on Indigenous Persons with Disabilities. There are some similarities uh, with the findings uh, of the little simi uh, similar a discussion on older persons and the CRPD. Uh, the experts in the meeting, they highlighted that indigenous persons with disabilities face exclusion and marginalization and multiple layers of discrimination based on their disability, their ethnic origin and their gender. Uh, the expert also identified community-based approaches as the most adequate framework for the overall inclusion of indigenous persons with disabilities and for the provision of support services. Um, I have here the Central uh, International Conventions and Declarations uh, uh, on Rights of Indigenous Peoples. I will not go into them in detail because they have been discussed yesterday. I will still want to mention them because they're very important. Uh, first, uh, the UN Declaration uh, on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which is politically and morally binding. Uh, especially, I would like to point out the Article 11, uh, where it says that Indigenous Peoples have the right to practice and revitalize their cultural traditions and customs. This includes the, uh, the right to maintain, protect and develop the past, present and future manifestations of their cultures. Uh, such as archaeological and historical sites, artifacts, designs, ceremonies, technologies, and visual and performing arts and literature. Also, uh, in the UN International Covenant uh, on Civil and Political Rights, um, it is uh, stated that in those states in which ethnic, religious, and linguistic minorities exist, uh, persons belonging to such minorities shall not be denied the right in community with the other members of their group to enjoy their own culture, to profess and practice their own religion, and to use uh, their own language. I think these two articles, uh, even though they don't discuss uh, social services, are something to be thought of in uh, organizing those services. And of course, we have the ILO uh, 169 uh, Convention uh, on Indigenous and Tribal Peoples, which uh, Finland has not as yet ratified. So, uh, how do these fundamental rights and uh, human rights come to practice in, this, uh, in the legislation in Finland, in other legislation? Uh, in the Act on the Status and Rights of Social Care Clients and also in the Act on the Status and Rights of the Patient, uh, 
uh, it's, uh, they say that uh, when organizing services, uh, the client's and patient's rights must be respected. So what does this mean? It means um, the client uh, or the patient has the right to good quality health care and medical care uh, and good quality social services. Uh, the services must be arranged so uh, that he or, uh, and he or she also shall also be uh, treated so uh, that dignity is not violated and that his or her conviction and privacy is respected. And uh, more importantly, uh, regarding our topic here, uh, the mother tongue, individual needs and culture of the client or patient have to be taken account as far as possible in his or her services. Okay, we also have uh, legislation on linguistic and cultural rights of the Sami in Finland. Uh, that is, according to the Finnish constitution, uh, the Sami as an indigenous people have the right to maintain and develop their own language and culture. Uh, and provisions on the right uh, of the Sami to use Sami language before the authorities are laid down by Sami language. Well, when it comes to the Sami Language Act, it contains provisions on the right uh, of the Sami to use their own language before the courts and other public authorities, uh, as well as on the duty of the authorities to inform and promote the linguistic rights of the Sami. However, uh, it only applies to specific, specific authorities, mostly situated in Sami homeland and only a specific situation. situation. Uh, uh, as only one third of the Sami actually live in the Sami homeland, uh, this is obviously not sufficient. In the Sami barometer, uh, it was uh, uh, well, it was conducted among adults whose mother tongue is Sami. And one-fifth of the people in the target group responded to the survey and of them 64% live in the Sami homeland and 36% uh, in other parts of Finland. The respondents, they consider that services available in Sami and the information about the, them are inadequate and the available of, availability of services is not considered good. Uh, health services, according to the survey, uh, were deemed the most important services that should be available in Sami languages, and the next important ones were education, social services, and the police. Uh, services and information about them were best available in the municipality of Utsjoki, and uh, there were especially few services available in the Inari Sami and Skoltska Sami languages. So, as we see, the situation is not very good. <clears throat> I will finish by uh, stating some culturally sensitive aspects to be considered uh, when organizing services for indigenous older persons and persons with disabilities. Uh, the first point is something that has been discussed here uh, many times already. <laughs> Uh, that is, uh, with memory disorders, uh, the need for services in one's original mother, th mother tongue uh, increases. At the same time, also, uh, children with disabilities need their services in their mother tongue in order to learn their language properly. Uh, it's crucial that language and cultural sensitivity are included in the assessment of a person's service needs, rehabilitation, services and care. Nature has a central meaning in Sami people's life. Uh, eight seasons based on the circulation of the sun and the moon set the pace of traditional tasks like reindeer herding. The Sami way of living and the seasons with their traditional tasks are things that should be taken into account when organizing services for Sami people. Uh, for example, possibility to live according to traditions like uh, having transport services to reindeer roundup. The international instruments and national legislation give many possibilities to respect indigenous people's rights, but they have to be used properly and amended when necessary. Thank you very much.
So uh, thank you, Sanna, very much for that nice talk. Uh, it was very interesting and enlightening. I wonder if we have any questions in the, from the auditory. Please write some questions to Sanna in the chat. Um, I can ask one question myself uh, when we wait to see if uh, someone else are want to interact with you. I was thinking if um, going through this, uh, all these uh, fantastic, of course, uh, uh, regulations that you have pointed out, do you know of any uh, nice examples where they actually have been implemented uh, to, to uh, uh, yeah, do you have some examples of implementation? Uh, I think this is something that uh, should be asked from uh, other speakers today who I think have more insight to the practical, uh, uh, yes, the practicalities. I'm also very interested to hear what they have to say. Yes, of course. I'm sorry to ask, ask questions to the wrong uh, person. So uh, I don't see that there are uh, any questions from the audience. So I thank you once again. And maybe uh, later during the program, we will uh, have some more questions. Uh, so by that, I would like to introduce the next speaker, which is Tenna Jensen, Associate Professor at the University of Copenhagen. And the title of the presentation is Realization of Human Rights and Identity as a Memory Disorder Progresses, Health Promoting Initiatives and Solutions for Municipal and Care Practices and Personal Experiences. Please, Tenna, welcome. Thank you so much. I trust you can hear me? Is the sound okay? Yes, we can hear you. Good. And thank you so much for inviting me uh, to this uh, relevant and important seminar. Uh, I will uh, talk today uh, as a researcher uh, and as head of the project called Aging in the Arctic, which uh, looks at uh, older people in Greenland and their quality of life, uh, well-being and health behavior. As part of the project, uh, we have had a focus on dementia uh, and dementia in, in older persons. Uh, just to give you a brief overlook of the, the dementia situation uh, in Greenland, uh, today it is uncertain how many persons live with a dementia disease uh, in Greenland. There is estimations that it is between 250 and, and 500 people who today are living either at home or in an institution with uh, a dementia condition or disease. It can be a difficult thing to obtain a diagnosis uh, in, uh, in Greenland when you're suffering from, uh, from dementia. So many people uh, out there live without knowing that they are affected uh, with dementia or they are unaware of which type of dementia uh, they, they have. Uh, on the overall, uh, there is a challenge with a lack of professional knowledge about dementia diseases, uh, how they unfold and what happens to the individual uh, during this process. So this means there is also scarce knowledge about the interaction with relatives, uh, sort of the, the process uh, of going through uh, a dementia uh, disease, both as an individual and as a family. Today, much of the information that exists on dementia uh, is in Danish. Uh, so even though uh, Greenlandic is, is the first language, uh, much of this uh, sort of professional information is still being communicated in Danish. And this is, uh, of course, uh, 
it's a situation that makes it easier for some members of the care staff to access this information than others. There is a lot of focus uh, both within the Greenlandic uh, society, but also within research on the importance of maintaining uh, the concept of personhood, identity, and personality uh, of the individual during uh, a dementia, uh, as dementia progresses. And, and this uh, maintaining of uh, the person's individuality and, and personal personality <laughs> is challenged due to the lack of knowledge of how the disease affects, affects uh, individuals. We know that uh, stimuli uh, is an important tool to recollect uh, memories and to uh, make active people with dementia when in care. So the use of music and images and uh, art and pictures and smells and sounds have uh, a, an effect on uh, persons with dementia that makes them recollect and remember uh, their lives and their themselves. Uh, in Greenland, uh, dementia is currently uh, primarily perceived as a disease, uh, which means that it belongs somewhere uh, between the health uh, departments and health system and uh, the municipalities. Uh, in 2013, uh, a national dementia strategy uh, was published uh, that focused on seven uh, focus areas. One was the health services where people get their diagnosis and are treated in the hospital system. The second was the municipalities, which is the organizational unit that handles everyday care uh, of persons uh, with dementia uh, disease. Then there was focus on the cross-disciplinary initiatives and ways of working with dementia as it is a, a phenomena that has both sort of health and social implications, which means that it's important to work on this together. There's also focus on cooperation with relatives, education, quality of care and services, and prevention and information. So as you can see, there is a lot of focus on the disease dementia and how to handle uh, sort of in a patient care uh, process. How do we do this from step one to, to the end? In the strategy, activity is also a core element. And I think that this is where the, the right to personality is most sort of prominently addressed in this strategy. In the strategy, it says that everyone needs meaningful activities in everyday lives. Persons with dementia are at risk of losing this. And what constitutes a meaningful activity differs between individuals. So in this strategy, there is a focus on, on the importance of uh, engaging with the persons with dementia in care situations and enabling uh, the persons to live their best life, doing activities they appreciate. And today, uh, this is sort of the formal frame around <laughs> the, the rights for people with dementia uh, now, of course, as it is being perceived as a disease. There is a focus generally that people with diseases have the right to treatment. They have uh, the right to, uh, to municipal services. Uh, and dementia is one of many diseases that uh, puts you in, in, into the system. So it is not seen as a disability as such. In care practice, uh, there is a lot of focus on the individual uh, as dementia progresses today. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, knowledge is scarce uh, among the care staff. And this is uh, primarily due to challenges between the Danish information material and the Greenlandic uh, 
spoken language in the care institutions, but also uh, the geographical situation of Greenland makes it difficult to send all staff uh, to uh, training courses in dementia as the courses, they take a lot of time and people have to be transported far away from home. So it is expensive and it requires a lot of time and logistics uh, to get trained staff. There are activities of training staff in-house or in the institutions, uh, but this is also a logistically challenging uh, exercise. But uh, in the everyday life in the care institutions, uh, there is a lot of focus on creating and maintaining cultural relevant activities uh, for people suffering from sort of mild to moderate uh, dementia. Many of these activities uh, take place in, in rooms as these, sort of activity rooms where you can cut bone, uh, you, can, uh, you can make fishing nets, you can uh, make uh, pearl uh, embroideries, you can um, prepare uh, different kinds of uh, skin and fabric and, and sew and knit uh, and all the kinds of sort of more quiet activities that can help people with dementia uh, engage with some physical uh, motorical skills. And we see that uh, in many uh, of the nursing homes, uh, but this happens on a daily basis. This happens, uh, these activities are mainly targeted uh, persons with mild to moderate dementia, uh, people suffering from severe dementia where disease is, is very far progressed. Uh, these kinds of activities are, of course, uh, more difficult to, to handle uh, for care staff and especially for the care staff who lacks training. In many uh, of the institutions, uh, Greenlandic food is a, is a very used and common way to engage with the census and with the uh, life his history of the individual. Uh, Greenlandic food plays a very prominent role in uh, cultural role and, and self-perception. Many of the people uh, with the dementia disease have uh, a personal history of hunting and gathering and fishing uh, and eating uh, certain uh, delicacies uh, throughout their lives. So what we see uh, in many nursing homes today is care staff uh, ensuring that Greenlandic food is available. Uh, in different textures that embraces all uh, sort of groups of, of all the people. So what you see here uh, on the screen is a plate of, uh, of Greenlandic food as it normally looks <laughs> in a normal state. And then you also have the gel food prepared for people with eating difficulties uh, to, to ensure that more frail all the people are also able to enjoy uh, the taste of Greenlandic food. So this is one of the most used sort of sensory uh, stimuli uh, in care uh, today. Of course, sort of the range of, of stimuli used and, and these kinds of activities, they, they differ a lot between the institutions uh, as it is today. Uh, one of the things that uh, I, as a researcher, and, and the projects that I've been involved in have a focus on is the use of reminiscence initiatives uh, for people uh, suffering from dementia. So uh, a lot of the reminiscence tools that are available today are conducted or constructed in a Danish context. Uh, and this is, of course, not relevant to people who have lived their entire life uh, in Greenland. So one of the things that we work to is to produce reminiscence tools uh, based on Greenlandic uh, materials with Greenlandic images and, and Greenlandic ways of making conversations about uh, different kinds of topics. And this is just a very new field uh, that we try to, to delve into to support sort of the maintenance of, of, of these cultural uh, conversations uh, as dementia uh, progresses. And we know also that there are many uh, care staff out there that 
do things in practice, make memory tests with objects uh, that can spark a conversation. Uh, so this is sort of a, a rising field where there is growing attention to the importance of ensuring culturally relevant uh, materials uh, in uh, care institutions. Oh, so that was my last slide. Uh, and there is uh, in Greenland now a growing uh, attention to dementia uh, and the disabilities that it can lead to uh, for people. And we have a national conference uh, on dementia uh, this November, uh, which is a collaborative conference between the Department of Health and the Department of uh, Social Affairs and the Aging in the Arctic Project uh, to hope to gain more sort of focus on, on dementia and also to spread knowledge about ways of engaging with persons with dementia in care situations that enables uh, an activation of personality and identity and memory uh, more. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tenma, for this nice presentation. And uh, uh, you have really shown a sort of um, a different a picture from different angles, the one where it's difficult to get information for the indigenous people in their mother language. But on the other hand, you describe uh, uh, the cultural activities that are very feasible. So I would like to ask, uh, how come is it, uh, uh, is it because the majority of the staff are also uh, indigenous or is it some kind of systematic, uh, uh, yeah. Well, in, in, in Greenland, uh, the indigenous question is, is different uh, than in, in the Scandinavian countries as the majority of the population is Inuit. And, mm -hmm. and um, of course, the main language is Greenlandic. Uh, so, so, so the Danish is a, a post-colonial legacy uh, that still lives in the system. Uh, which also has to do, of course, with, with knowledge hubs and, and, uh, and capacity uh, in many ways. So, so there is an information flow in Danish from uh, the Danish uh, healthcare system about dementia into the Greenlandic system. Uh, but the translation of it is, is lacking often. Mm -hmm. and many people are working to, to make Greenlandic versions of uh, dementia information materials uh, that are understandable by them. The population at large, uh, but there is also the element of capacity here uh, that it, it requires a lot of capacity to translate. Uh, and the majority of the care staff uh, working in nursing homes are, speak Greenlandic, and, and many speak uh, Greenlandic only. So, so there is sort of a, and, and not, this is not only within uh, the dementia uh, field. This is a broad, uh, of course, uh, debate and. And situation that that there are two languages at play uh, in Greenland, uh, yes. Greenlandic, and there is the Danish, mm. and uh, and they coexist in, in many uh, mm. situations. But especially when we go into the practice field, where you have uh, care staff treating individuals, uh, the Greenlandic is very important to mm. have access to. It's very important to have the information in Greenlandic. Uh, so we have some questions from the chat, and uh, one is from uh, Berit Rorby, who is writing that the research in Norway concludes that one of the main reasons to dementia is that many have heard of hearing challenges. Can you tell us how all the Nordic countries have taken this knowledge into account? Uh, I think this is maybe an overall question, or maybe you know something about this from Greenland. No, not specifically, no. 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 Um, how much and what kind of, of collaboration is done with the third sector organizations and volunteers asked by Thea Hammar from Finland? Mm. In, in the Greenlandic context, uh, of course, many, uh, many relatives engage uh, with this. Uh, and uh, 
if we take the relatives first. But it is a difficult situation because dementia is considered as a relatively new disease in a Greenlandic context. Uh, the average life expectancy has grown rapidly. Uh, so we see many more old, older people uh, in Greenland mm. now. So dementia as a widespread disease uh, is, uh, is new. So this means that the relative's understanding of the diseases uh, is also sort of still growing. And, and that has great implications for how it's possible as a relative to engage with a person with dementia. Uh, so, so there are many different understandings of what dementia is uh, mm. among the population. And this makes this uh, a difficult situation in Greenland as everywhere. Uh, it's always mm. difficult. Uh, and in relation to it, with sort of with, with the third sector and, and organizations, there is collaboration uh, between, for example, the Alzheimer's Association and, and mm. certain municipalities that puts out their material and makes it available to the municipalities so they can translate it uh, and things, uh, things like that. But, but the Greenlandic society is, is, the population is widespread mm. uh, and, and, and there are networks of especially relatives to people with dementia, but the NGO section or sort of interest groups uh, are still, they're small, relatively small. Mm. So there are associations of older people, but not specifically targeted uh, focusing on dementia. Uh, and yet. we have one last, thank you, Tana. We have one, one last question to you. And I thought we'd, uh, uh, because we are now a bit late, but as you are leaving the seminar, I, I wanted to, to uh, give you the opportunity to answer these questions. And there's one from Lydia Heikele, who is asking a very relevant question if there are culturally based and relevant dementia tests and diagnosis in Greenland? Yes, <laughs> there is. There has just been developed uh, a RUDAS test, uh, which mm. has been translated into a, a Greenlandic setting uh, to make it uh, culturally relevant. And this has been uh, tested, uh, and uh, I'm not doing the testing, so uh, so I cannot uh, say what the results uh, mm. of the testing are yet. But I know that it has been tested in, in many, many persons because there is an awareness that this is important, not only to translate to Greenlandic, but also to translate the content to to enable people to give yes. answers. Yes, so, so yes, that exists. Okay, and last question. Is there a word for dementia specifically in Greenlandic? Do you know that? I don't speak Greenlandic, unfortunately, uh, but I know that uh, some people talk about it as, as uh, you know, becoming a child again. Uh, mm -hmm. But that, that is one way of talking about it. Uh, okay. But I see the dementia word is being used also now uh, okay. because people are gaining awareness of this. Uh, and, and as the care staff becomes more aware of what is at play here, uh, it is being framed as, mm -hmm. as a range of diseases uh, more than as a sort of a, a state of, of digression uh, as, as it has been, been mm -hmm. perceived as before. But yeah, I hope that answers. Yes, thank you so much, Tana. Thank and, you. Uh, uh, I will now leave the word to the next speaker. Uh, that is El Aikio, uh, who is a public health nurse in the SAPME area. And uh, the name of the presentation would be the role of language and culture in interaction. And the presentation is in North Sami. Please welcome Elle. Ja, ja tuon Tathalla Decker Fadda mi... Oinokota muu PowerPoint maittai. Joo. Joo, voida. Tekker fäntämässä sähtäsi halla olle kuhka ja mun vaita lahti inlahpeessaan seervahtan seminaari olles äikke ja suovu maitti leppe jo hallan. Mun ies parkkaan parkkaan tervasvota tipsarin täppe säämme kuoblus ja ja tie tielan muun nappa mun inlas tutki inke inke muusla mahke tekkeri stuoraa 
tiehtäki vuodustuvan juurata kahtaan ässäin, mutta mun haalan tien, tien vuodul main mun väsi ihan toppe parkoellimis. Mun tasalassin, että mulla on tervasuotivissa, mun parkkaan pohtsitiksärin roktopalvelu sain mioin vilta ahte mun joodaan tai pares olmuihin luhte ja tai olmuihin luhtekin ja tarppa siitä viehki. Musta dementia ja palliatiiva tiivissu Lasse Ohpu ja mä näin ja nuorait tervasuota tilläin. Nää maitta ei Lasse lohkaan vähän ääne puhuta. Muu parko kuululla ollessa mitä me nuorta pelteen. Muu parkoattila parko teannut kieltä ja tästä mun parkkaan mai suomapelte. Mä oon ne tähtä väntälänu tehalas, ahti taas kalka hallat. Ja nämä alas siitä, että kun parkkuissiste on aina tämän olmuissiste, kun johtaa. Te huomaa, että olmo ei tiedä tai siinä kielellä voika ei vuota ei piirra. Siinä ei tiedä, että siis la voika vuotta pulaskuutta hieta se killi. Ja sä, me laitoin alohille ja mä sanoin, että hui, mm, tuora tarpu pirket ja kulaskutta ja kulahallat. Ja tahte trauma, millä pohtaan kitta toppe, mangi polvait, outti polvain ja pistä kitta suovas polvitta, lää namalla siitä, että ta, palvelu saa hei kaunosämekilli. Tämä on äikki lää koihtokkee mm, skublejumi, sikke kielas, ahte kulttuuras, mutta ta, si, aina toppe sisteta. Mm, Mua mai mun kohtaan otnapeive rasismain. Ja mun oiviltaan tämän tain ja taan ahte taht suovomin toppe parkkuus olles äikke. Ahte mii fertet teko akkastalla ja vuotuustihtaan manneta kiela ja kulttuura toutamustaan valto, valtokulttuura siste latehalas. Ja tämän munin teko vaippa hallahtaan siis ko Tahtan fertesi ja päivät siellä kaassia, että kulttuura ja kiela fertte välti muuttii, mutta lihkämi fertte olles äikke pealusti hietsonet. Me pohtitte, kun voille läppos tohko valtokulttuuri, valtokulttuura sisä. Tässä la, lassiin veltä aihtaa, tai vuodo ja lahusain ja ellin saajis. Ja tämän, tämän päivissä, että minä te uskotaan ruona. Ruona kulun ja lisma miipuahta min ala. Mun maitta ei väsihän alle olutaan ahte olmohla vaipaan. Vaipaan tämän pelusta ja, näin, ja vaipaan käipidit. Täällä on takka muu väsähus ja ääntälihko mii hallat takka olmuin mailla muutuike unnan resurssa. Lämes olmuit ja puhtsi olmuin te sähtä lähahte. Siis ei puo houtti, mutta saa olla mielestä, ahte siis la poikaa vuota juomasanu jo, ierä maissia täällä Fitnemen. Hui täy ja kulla ahte manimpa sämekielä palvelussa ja sämekielä kalka oino toppe palvelussain. Ko puo mä, sä me latsahkoi mähteet. Mähteet on nuppitaan valtokielake. Ja nuuhan tahleä. Eanas oasi mähtehtaan nuppikiela tai valtokiela. Ja eantali suomapelte puohkaalla mankkakielakat. Ahte tieni, tieni sähte akkastalla tai jahte ei ja kulahallan. Mutta tästä puohtaketa äddejumi. Ahte maan tehalas lää äddet ja fähtet ja ainiitaan ahtetaan kielaasla arvo. Tasalas sillä vai tahahtes tahtaahla juohkään tai kiellä joukkui, siirren tai kiellä joukkui. Nuohte palvelu saa vaihketa liftsi fitnemis. Täällä mun halan tavisämme kiellä ektui. Te sähtä fitne norkkapelte palvelu saa tavisämme kiellä. Outa merkka tiitä. Tai hiijah nuo älki, kun systeema norkkapelte. Lanuppilaa vaan, kun suomapelte. Tässä Lassiin stahtaa heijä suopaan puhlaan, puhtaasiin tai nukohtuvan rätjauhtaisparkkuus ahteen. 
Kostas Berki, Fitnekal Rääjäihrasta ja Erenomas Puetsi Tivsu, Fitner Rääjäihrasta. Mutta muului Ferte Pisso, Tien Riihkaas, Koston jo lähti. Ja Outo Merkka tiihti täppä Teanuleajista, Laualle Roassala sahte, Mi Ferte Fitnat Berki, Vietsamen Outo Merkka tiihti, Tvaktar, Tvaktara Berki, Avvilis, Kosalla Tsuoti Kuhtalogi kilometrä. Tansa ei saa te fitnesemme tanta teanuusta eikä häräsyöas. Kosala, ohtse on nälmäs käftsi logikilometrä. Ah, te täällä taas tahta, mitäs teko mm, siirremin. Ähm, Tahahtella ta kiella kieva hämmi ja kulahallan. Ja täällä mun alan namalassi tein olmuin piirra. Keinlateko mä näet, vaarasolmot, käske dementia puhetsit, puhetseolmot, lämmäsolmot. Kein ei ja käske naftsa nuolus miehtä tai kelää siitä. Ja tai hei vääjä jurtta siitä ja käipidit. Ja talleman puorella kulahalla tai ja kielain miituusleä tai ja vaimu kielain. Ja tämän vuotta erinomaisin kolla saakka mä näin ja parisolmu. Ja erinomaisin dementia puheeksi olmu. Mutta tämä olisi äättejä, mitä pohtaa toppe. Tälle on tietahmasla saakka. Tämä on tietahtai sääni unnan nyanssa tämä siis. Ja sähtää teko pissofaaruus taas maita holmosjurttaansa. Tähän tämä ei tämän touttu, tämä on perustajamis- ja oktavuotas. Ahte tunnosla oktavuotta, tuustain ja kääntöllä tiksumen, tuusla oktavuotta tai ja olmoin koton perustat ja kulahalat. Tässä mulla on lokten maitta ja tanahte lääkö tsallojuuvon vai hallojuuvon kiella. Taninko, tadi paha puhtan, minsk kuvlasysteemä, tihte, ei jähnu mankasakkeä mähte, lohkat ja tsalli kiela. Ja koistokke suomapäältä ja maittain norkkapäältä tahkon alle oulupuolaan skoovi ja pähpärä ja brosyyra ja pisot sämekilli. Ja muhtumin täkkä praktiikkalas parko, parkkuusten olmos miehtahte lääkotahjusta tähän resurssa, mihin tarppasuvo, kun tämä holmo heimähtetään. Lohka. Tai kieva hetki heimähti lohka. Tai soittella vättis halttasi jopa tämän ohta valtokielä lohka. Ja ääntä lihtaisi tämän tsallojuumon säämekielä. Resurssa vätni lää oitno siis täppe, täppe komiparkahte olles äikkeahte. Ahte, ta kiela katsalta puhtama ei tiesahte. Juo la tehalla sahtella tsallojuvon kiellä ja ääntä lihtsi kuulla ja nuora, että hän la hui tehalla sahti kiellä la oinnusista. Mutta kun la unnan resursseja, mä juehkihti, lääkota justa tahta ässimaansa, kalka juehkihti. Tästä on sierralavan palvelusahma, missä lähet. Ja... Alo pohta katsalta, että maahlata tehaleamosat, maas koihtoke tarpasataan sämekielat, sämekielait palvelusait. Ja mm, mu, muun mielestä huivättis pitsähti, kun sierra ää, linja ei taiha, että kiesla äänemusta tarvitaan. No kun mun esken aamuihin sämekielat parkiille ja unnan suomen päälte, vel unnipuhko norkkapäälte. Muhto, tai jo ehkä aina Sämekiel parkilla kolle arvus. Tämä niin ahte, jos mun sujuhon tai tämä outti, tämän chajehihtan perustumi ja kulahallama, maan tehalasta ja tämä oktavuutta. Olmot pirkeihit huipuures. Tämä pirkeihit aina kielain, tai ja palvelusain, mai sikkie addojuvo. Tämä hei ja nuu mankasa, ma mähte käipilitaan. Tämä hei vetse käipilitaan. Tämä kalkka siitä muu kiili ja välti vuuhtii tämän muu kielamahtu. Ja tälle iä saakka taas ahte, että olmos mähtäsi fuunehtan valtokiela, vaikka se nämä lasi tämän oktavuolan fitnessin. 
Mun juurta sanoi, että häntä olisi psykiatria pältetä huitehallasta, kulahallan ja dementia puheksi olmuja. Astalussa on lää puheäänne musta taht ahtemisla unnan olmot, keät parkehtait praktiikkalas parkkuit, keät lahtaatte tai olmuissista parkalle. Mun äänten huipuudessa ahte, ahte olmohmanne hitsa se karjääräin ja tällähän vertekee aippas tahta tää siis. Kittas tahta tämä siis miettä, että muomi fitnessimme ääne tai parkiitan suorikäin. Käy pitää me mulla on lokten taas tämän tiihteahteen. Käy pelusaat ahteta, mutta se nähtee, että kievahi palvelussa ei mähtä nuupuudes. Käy pitää tämän mai häälini. Entä liikkolla saakka olmuin kehla puhetsi. Te, tallehan lähetä parki kuhte ferte käipidit ja akkastalla siin päälle. Ja tässä ähtöllä nuotitaan parkeimaita. Lä älkiit lähtö toppe tävälas parki, kun älkiit käipidit siellä lavan voi kappaleita. Ja voi hoktata okta almo ja riihkaa. Tätä palvelusahla pirkkuit. Pirkkuit tai riihkai kaskas. Tuoramus oasi palvelusain kaunoihin nokkapeltejä. Tohko peässään soittella ieräriihkaas orruitta ole vättis. Ja tällä kellä saakka enää sämekielä palvelussa. Kulttuuraatte jumis lähtee. Mulla on tällä hallan ole ollut kielas ja mä antan kiela tehalas. Te mun mielestä lama ei hui tehalas ättehtaan ahteta kulttuurilla mä ei taas. Ja vaikka mä ahtasin kielaa. Te, jos ei ajatetaan kulttuura, ikävä perustuvan tähän kulttuurassa, te talle eh, saatte hastalusat tai eh, iä perkiellä, niin merkkasä. Ja taas lamaisia malahkaa ja te, no kun mun tatsi, että johonkin sä melasla mankakielaa, te se malahkaa, sä melatsa fertei suokkartalla, hietsas kulttuurilla stoutamusa ja tuolla lumi, tai niin kuin millä hoas Vassin täppä valtokulttuurassa ja niissä kontakta valtokulttuuriin, ääne ja unnit. Ja tässä sähtälä vuohoktiin, nuotiin, taittaa olmuitte ja käynnä muuluikeraisesti. Te mun loktein tässä saveltä minoriteettaan, minoriteettaas, missä veha tekee minoriteettaat, keinä joko kiellä minoriteettaat tai he kulttuura minoriteettaat, mahtoutet. Mä en lata hastelusahla vielä suoraat, kun mm, miskä kuuletteko tämä on valtosuorikäin. Ja taas mun kuorasan vielä luohpaas taas ahte, mistä voikaa vuodat ja tarppuut. Ja erohu saattain tarppuin ja äättejumis voikaa vuodain. Mutta alle Oulu meillä tohkehantaan ahteta IPR-leät. Ja mitä vahataan ahte mipirket. Mun häälihtsin päässä eerehtään jurtakis ahte mipirket. Mun häälihtsin päässä äänehtiä saa ahteta liftsi luntulas osita kiela ja kulttuura vuhtiivalto. Ja tää mun ainan tässä alle Oulu parit. Ja optiivelta, okta alamu ja järiikka, että haastelu saa pohte, maittaa ja taas, että mi fertetteko parkat, jäijä riikka ei se välttii. Ruossalla tietysti puhuu haastelemus, mutta toppella kun sä me lähtee toppemaan. Teve luopas mun halan pohteikkis, on ihan chat. Mun ha Namuhin jo eskätä mi pirket, mun saa vaan sinä tehdä reuttasi. Mä ilmi reuta hui jodani, mi verte minne ärpevirolas, mä ilmi verte mai reuta, tämän faarus. Ja miikä parkahta, tämä koette kulttuura kaskas, mun aina min rolla kulttuura tulkka. Ja tälle tällä nuuahte, mi tarppasit nuppi nuppi tämä. Reutatusa pohteet ja mi ferte pissohtain faarus. Kiihtu muu asis. So, elle aikou.
Thank you so much for this engaged and uh, presentation. Um, uh, I don't think we have time for uh, any questions now because we are a bit late in the mm -hmm. program, but uh, I, uh, I think we are many of us understanding your situation and we understand your point. And uh, there are some examples of uh, cooperation across the borders. And I think that we need to work more on mm -hmm. that. But uh, uh, we, we also keep hope for future collaboration. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Elle. It's okay. And uh, uh, now I will leave the word to the next uh, a talk and I would like to introduce Marit Laila Logie, uh, who is a rehabilitation officer and will give her talk on experiences on health services for Sami people with cognitive disabilities. Uh, please, Marit Laila. Welcome, Marit Laila. Olu kiihtu. Ja mun län Marit Laila de, ja mu faaga suuri kille löyski väju duhtin. Ja mun parka no me saami rada din väju duhtin palvelusas Finnmarku puhtsi vessus. Millä da spesialista darvis vuoda palvelusa tässä Norka sistemas. Ta palvelusa lähtös Pasiante ei käynyt kognitiivat toimia vahtuut. Joku rökäämäs tähemmälle Georgiaan mannavuolas outal kahtsumrihjäki. Ja käynyt tarpeu ennen viittis vaakalla slahkone, mutta ei edesät väijy duhtimi. Te kouta merkät ihte medicinalas, fysiikalas, aihtsalas, kognitiivat sosiaali- ja psykososiaali lahkonemi. Mutta tämä on jo tarpeen sitä pasiantia, mitä kuhki haikki, että he olisivat ällänäkin näitä juovolämiä terveysuolapalveluissa ja juokamaan tässä. Täällä tietysti me olemme houtelleet, että sillä huirraisesti olisi vielä hämmäin. Mutta tämä on ollut minulle meitä takkadillis, koska terveysuolapalveluissa on arava hänen valti ja vaihkuuhan peilusvuotta ollut me ällänäkin, mitä kuhki haikki olla. Kouta märkä tehtä eräa pasiantia kontausta. Ja jos kyllä muu paragulan saami raadattiin, että minä olen ollut saanut pakalalla, mutta minä ei faakautta nähtiin, ja muutui suovuolitin saami pasiantteita, kelle väilähtiin prosessin spesialista terveysuolapalvelussa. Ja nyt kun aamu huvui vähän soudelma ihan väilähtiin, minä saattaa harvi chillikin tuossa muuttiin saaniin ja oppilaat, että lähe viittis ja kompleksa faakasvarikki. Mun mun aikun voi hoitne vanha hätskähtseli muihteli hie juohki muhtin tai muu vaasahusain. Mä mus lähti ei vielä emmi kuin saami pasiantui kuin päijytuhtimis. Jooro lahnuu heivemä, mutta ei mun rekta maat saanie pitset miehle mi i heive. Täällä Särkkä mi pohtoutta saami pasiantas mun teivän väijytuhtin palvelusas. Ja mun mielestä tahtee spätselästä huipuudestan tili, a kosmi lähokna saami servolakas. Minä tämän monimuslogiakin sanalla tiehtuu ja mahtuu maankatafus outanan puolin saami pasiantte hektui. Mi tiehti houtamärkä tihtä kulttuurkelpulosvuohta ja kiellä le tehalastan terveysuola palvelusas ja nuu maiteustan väijytuhtin palvelusas. Mutta mis vailu aina tuskan ja faagalas kelpulosvuohta justen makkarheivheemiä ja lähetarpu väijytuhti, mis saami pasiantte hektui. Muu ole miltä aina lokaltalla minuutna. Mis lähtevät vaasahusat ja haastelussa mä chatnaan sitten pasiantta kaarehtimi ja diagnostiseerimi. Mutta no mun haljen pitkä hänne tehtyvän prosessimi alkahuva manjel koon mä suodjuu diagnoosa ja väijyduhtin prosessa alkahuva. 
ja ärnamagit måste ju ole bil åtjo ouden muhtina tein haastelussa ma heillä nu oinosis sami patientti veiduhtin prosessas ja makar vaasa husa mis me lähtein heivu heivehemmin palvelussa ei sami patientteja Tällä on jäävuhis maailmi teivälejä. Kun saami patient teivälejä väijutuhtiin palvelussa, on saattaa mankadillis kovvili, että kun lehtiin kohti jäävuhis maailmi teivälejä. Mutta tätkin ei soihti kappake maille, että me jälkäsin nuulea. Eesaltista väijutuhtiin palvelussa. Tällä on jäävuhis maailmi, että se luuntulas tjänästä kautta medisinnillä suokalahki. Nuko ei rääkiä tervysuola palvelusain. Ja tämä valtavuolkka sai tämän tohpagi suoliduvun toimman aktsa. Mie esältis lää medisinnillä stoapa. Ja tämä tapalla mus lää ahta väijuiduhtin ihmidu, vada ko lineara prosessan. Mus lää huijelka mihtuut ja vuorataa musa. Alkurais kitta lohpi. Ja oasiin taas lämä ei ole outaa näin, mikä saat mihtiä tämän väijyduhtin prosessissa. Tämä pidjui mihtut ja mihtu kalki hola huuva pidjui naikimeeris siskopäältä. Ja tämä mihin soihti tajun julkistaka, mutta pidjo vuodetamus ahti soon, kässä väijyduhtin koska. Tämä kalka ihmeeli ja tohki hiitä niitä suoliduvun toimanautsa. Vissi se ehtui mieltä. Ja tämä pala, että siellä huumaan tämän toimman vastuvirran, kuin tuoda oasiin tämän prosessissa. Ja väijytahtin palvelussa, että jos lähellä valtu oli, millä individä vähki, no ei se enää laitetaan, kun valtee väijylös. Tervysvuotta vahtu ja kulttuurilla stuokas. Olo moi, no... Tervysvuhti ja vahtu, johon kanssa luuntulut tjaknaassa meidän olot mun kulttuurilla stuokaji. Mun saami kontaus mi oi ni tauja, että toi mä naaksa, että he vaadittu i hummo, ikä tä chilikin juo samalla, että kun tämä tervysvuotta palvelussa on tauja vuorotu juo. Mun samasta hii merkkas, että vaadittu i lihimi juo. Mun hummo toi mä vahtu, että pirraan juolla kuutta. Ille lihka luuntulostaan kontaustus. Ja muu oimi oit, niin mä ja saami patientti tervysvuolta ihmadusas. Tässä tau ja arbevirjolos lahko nämä hoasi. Tämä hiiesaltisti jos merkkas, että medsinglas oinnus la unni ja arvo. Muuta saami servolla kai tauji hoi niin, että tervysuoli maadusas maitta ei leale harbe virulas aspekta. Vei juhtin tauja chilikin juvolla kuin lineera prosessan. Mut saami patientti, kun mi vaasii tauji, että vei juhtin prosessa toi maa vähän erää ritmas tai struktuuras. Kuta mitä apala chuurutu juvu tervysuolta palvelusas. Tämä mieltis pukta mangi haastelu sai sihki mihtui pitchami. Muh maitan väijy duhti ma mihti tea mai. Teko ouda märkä tihti. Saami kontaus soi niin mai tauji, että iesäänällä suohta sahta ihmidu vo herra lähtsä. Ja että maitta ei ära arvu pouhta houtan ja sahtele vuoltun. Ja nu ma ei hahta äänetä kollektiivalla sjuttusa muuhki pohta outan. Outa märkä tihti, kun mihtu pidjuit. Te tau ja oait niitä on tendenssä, että tällä äänefuukkust on, että toait ma tjada huvo, kodana kielegi tjada hada. Mun on ma ei valje mieltä valta hohta keisa. Ja mun mielestä täällä lakka routa mä ehkä mii tjuuge muhtiin tein dilemma ja mä sahti tjuudjelit. Tällä vaasahus, kos lei manna, mii oatjui diagnoosa mii kaipida pistävä sveajutuhtima. 
man har varit mitt eller i hur långt eller så att se en process så att i hur man har låtit en vattubirra. Var när man pyntiga det ska det verka bara väl så att det vattubirra i hur man rappar sitt är det gott eller gott där på det så. Faga birra så att se hur jävla gott så att man har birra så för att rappa sin mycket eller vad diagnosa birra. Ja loppa loppa stakar det ägtun att just väck i galga så att hade ollislöcka. Det ga i bidu för rabbas vad det är hur man det diagnosa birra. Det är till och skillet nu ammas man kan där för sådär bara ge samis. Att det är hur man vart och är dagt i birra. Det slår mig tjänar stakar filosofer och så är nu är man tar gott och sitter att i dagt och galga bimmat. Det har gått ihåg att märka ditt uppstatt som vårt i manka sam i servolagas. Jag vill ha ett stål upp mot en gjort som vårt är att jag sa att det är lika rikt att fokusa på att den var du. Jag mådde mig att det är två av mig som har hållit lyst att sista den är att lägga rytm av det här strukturen. Det har mig inte där på laddarna. Jag har ju så att det räftes att det är alla som man har på sitt. Man har varit och pirra. Ige det så att det är så nu alldeles att det är slunt och lämnas reaktionen att byta här. Jag hej vi här just tackar till dig. Går svårt att det är att lägga en rabba så att det. Lopp och bälis. Det är för rabba så att man är diagnoser i med dem. Nu går det där så att det är en väldig process. Att det är man inte här när man slunt eller snäva, man får gå mot verket bara för att det är att patienten är en del. Jag vet att jag inte vill att det är en del av att vi är där och gör det i hållet. Jag vet att det är en del av att jag inte vill att det är en del av att jag inte vill att det är en del av att jag inte vill att det är en del av att jag inte vill. Vähki tähän osittain vähkis, mitä alla tämä suola palvelussas. Ja lopas mun halli on vielä pitkä matka jäljellä. Lähellä nu, a fiso patientta sahte heivi, hejjaset väijutuhtiin palvelussait eftuja. Vai lähellä nu, a väijutuhtiin palvelussas sahte heivi huvu fiso patientteja. Jag lägger aig i laddande så att det väger dukt i mig att jag satt att definiera jobbet. Jag ådar natt att sami perspektivas. Kikt om åt. Så, tack så mycket Marek Laila för den här presentationen. I think that you have answered your questions yourself, or at least that was how I perceived your thoughts, that, uh, that it is time that uh, the rehabilitation process should adjust to the individual needs. Uh, I would nevertheless like to ask you, uh, do you think that... Uh, if the service would be provided by some speaking staff, would that change uh, the process? Or is it very much still a matter of uh, language or a uh, cultural misunderstanding? Have you some thoughts about that? Yes. Yes. Mun ainan tänä, että lyftä nukulle ei oudella me taas nämä huvun tien, että tätä struktuurilla hupsijuvun erää vuokalakaa meiltä. Mi inu heivetän saamelajji. Että kielä ja kulttuuri maadusle okta oasida. Mun liikka olulla, että systeemä man siskopäältä tätä toi maata rehabiliteeringa. Ouda märkä tihtä tähä, että Missä täällä projektin on nämä kosmikähtölit? Tämän väijutuhtin prosessa pitäisi saamia jahkota kameltä. Ja että oudeli kalka juovuutta on struktuuria ja ihmadusaa. Kuta mi lataa paljon suora servolakas.
perhaps a bit more flexible in time and uh, and yes. Uh, so thank you very much once again. And we have no more questions from the chat. So welcome back to the to the seminar. It seems to me like many actually are still online. I'm very happy about that. Um, so now we will continue our uh, afternoon session. So I'd like to introduce the next speaker, which is Margareta Utschek, Associate Professor from Umeå University. And the title to her presentation is to listen, understand and include disability service and support. Please, Margareta, you're welcome. Um, as you heard, my name is Margareta Utschek. Um, I'm uh, Umesame from Umesame area here in northern Sweden. I was born and grew up close to the mountains. Today, I'm an uh, associate professor uh, at the Department of Social Work, Umeå University. Besides teaching, I'm also working with research, uh, mostly on uh, welfare issues regarding Sami. And today, I'm going to talk about um, issues on Sami, welfare issues on Sami, uh, among Sami with disabilities based on a Nordic project I was working with some years ago. This project was initiated by the Norwegian Directorate for Children, Youth and Family Affairs. It was uh, coordinated by the Nordic Welfare Centre here in Stockholm, here in Sweden, and the Swedish part was also hosted by Department of Social Work, where I'm working at Umeå University. And the short background was that there was lacking knowledge about living conditions among Sami with disabilities. Authorities and decision makers didn't know how Sami individual rights in welfare system were considered. And the aim of the project was to reach extended knowledge about living conditions among Sami with disabilities in Sweden also considering legislations with rights as indigenous and as persons with disabilities. And there were also uh, aim of investigate requests for changes uh, of these conditions and gender difference, differences, if any. Living conditions was about subjective well-being, like life satisfaction, how a good life uh, was considered to be, or quality of life. It was also about capability in leisure time and work, and it was about person, personal autonomy, autonomy, about health, about social participation and meaning in life. It was also about social services, health and insurance system, and the informants evaluations of these. And examples of uh, the social insurance system and associated legislation and conventions used are the Swedish Healthcare Act, the Act on Support and Service for Certain Disabled, the Social Services Act, the Social Code and the United Nations Conventions of the Right of Indigenous Peoples, Persons with Disabilities, Women and Children. And conclusions shortly from that project were that it's important in the welfare system to consider Sami rights to speak for themselves. It seemed to be obvious uh, among many people in uh, mainstream society, but not always among Sami as we have uh, hundreds of years of colonization where uh, Sami in history were labeled as less able. Um, so that's important to further develop. It's also important with increased development of ser services based on the individual's needs regarding their life situation, their personal integrity, their own Sami language and culture. 
there are needs for special considerations regarding measures and services offered to Sami children, to older persons and women with disabilities. These considerations were shown to be important among all Sami, but special, there were indications that there were special uh, needs for special considerations regarding children, older persons and women, as they were less uh, listened to or more marginalized in the welfare system. There, we found examples on, on that. It's also <clears throat> need for further development of the social insurance system with its legislation with, re with regard to some with disabilities. And that was also, uh, that was specially um, indicated among Sami working in traditional Sami uh, work like reindeer herding or traditional handicraft. Um, the social insurance system is based on mainstream society and the organization of working life and leisure time and the obvious line among many people between those. However, among Sami and traditional work, the line between uh, working time and leisure time is not always well obvious. Uh, traditional work is often a life, uh, a kind of living uh, the life. So um, the line is uh, not always obvious. And in several of the legislations, you have to prove uh, what happened in working time and what happened in leisure time. For example, if you are in an accident as a reindeer herder, and if you uh, should be offered um, offered any any service, uh, anything from the uh, ser the service system, welfare service system, the re regard, for example, on the social code, economic, um, for example, economic um, services for uh, loss of um, salary, you have to prove that the accident happened in working time and not in leisure time. And that might be hard if there are no obvious line between these. That's one example. And also if you have been working as a as your own employer for many years with traditional handicraft, for example, um, you might not be included the same way in the social insurance system, um, partly um, because uh, life, uh, working life and leisure time um, might influence each other. So there are no obvious lines between these. Developments have been made after that project was ended. Actors in welfare system have listened. Development have taken place, for example, in the Swedish National Agency for Education. They are working on uh, a new plan for uh, education in a special school for children with disabilities. And I have been involved in that work. So, so I know from experience they are working um, uh, successfully with that uh, development. Other developments indicate that actions taken place regards all Sami, for example, in healthcare, which is good, obviously. Um, also, indication that awareness among uh, about special needs among Sami with disabilities are still lacking in welfare system and continued development of respectful inclusions is still needed. Examples of development for all Sami are uh, the Social Services Act, which has been developed uh, recently. It, now it includes more obviously the responsibility to support all vulnerable groups. And uh, the national minorities are specially mentioned. And Sami are one of five uh, acknowledged national minorities. Uh, however, Sami are also indigenous with indigenous rights. 
which are somewhat stronger than the rights of national minorities. Um, and Sami as indigenous with indigenous rights um, is not mentioned, mentioned in the Social Services Act. It's important to recognize also that some in social social services are based on vulnerable groups and in uh, Sami as indigenous are not uh, a vulnerable group per se, but we have groups among Sami that are vulnerable. For example, um, persons with disability that might be in a vulnerable situation or women that are subjected to violence also a vulnerable group. Uh, so, um, but their rights as indigenous are um, not mentioned in the Social Services Act. There are also ongoing developments in healthcare and elder care, and also in child care in, in, and in the school system as a whole, as I mentioned. Awareness in welfare system is also important, and that was shown in the project I was working with. The awareness about yourself as a professional is important. It's important of critical self-reflection about who you are, where you come from, about your social position and power position linked to your social position as a welfare actor and how you are coping with your own position in your professional approach and who you are offering services, health and social services to a Sami with a disability. And in this context, context, it also includes accepting that you might not fully understand what you are facing if you not are Sami yourself. You might not ever fully understand the narrative the Sami with a disability are telling you how his or life has been or is being and what this person have experienced. You might not fully understand that, but it's important to fully accept it, although that you might not understand. Um, human beings are regarded as natural curious. So we often want to know, well, what happened and how is your story and and um, why uh, why did you choose that? But in this situation, you sometimes have to accept that you can't understand everything and you still can offer help and service. Um, awareness also includes how language is used. For example, the term disability. Together with other indigenous scholars in um, Australia, Aotearoa, New Zealand, Canada and United States, we have uh, critically explored and analyzed the term disability, which we can't find in our own uh, indigenous languages actually. And that might be explained by our peoples traditionally not labeled persons with various abilities and categorized them as less able or disabled. Instead, all individuals were obviously a part of family, social groups, society, and were regarded and appreciated for their abilities. Uh, so disability is, is a, uh, is a, a term which might be uh, discussed, I think, and are discussed. And I, I also met um, and asked informants in the project I worked with that did not consider themselves to be disabled. They were aware of their so-called um, uh, disability, but they didn't uh, consider themselves as disabled. So that's important to be aware of how the language is used. Awareness is important as it influences service and support offered from welfare actors. I will give an example with a quote from the study 
One informant said, when I did this investigation and the nurse read it to me, I heard that the, the psychologist who did it with me, she had misunderstood me in lots of things. And that has probably to do with that she thinks differently. I will, will also give a short example of uh, a social worker's uh, story. Um, I met this social worker when I was invited to a university in the United States some years ago. She was not indigenous, indigenous herself, and she was working as a social worker among older indigenous people. And she once uh, visited uh, an older indigenous woman, and this woman asked her, the social worker, to do something which she didn't understand why. She did understand the instruction, and she knew she could she could do it, and it was. Um, in the frame of her ability and authority, it was not against any legislation, but she didn't understand why and the meaning she should do that. But she didn't question the older person. She didn't ask why she should do that. She just did it. And the older woman was so happy and grateful because her needs were fulfilled. Um, and I think that's a good example of accepting what you not, don't understand, being aware that you have another worldview and another experience and history, and you, you don't understand the narrative you are listening to, listening to and the person who experienced that, who are telling you that, but you can still accept your less of understanding and you can still help this person. I have another example from the study where an older person uh, an informant from the study I did uh, was off, was asking for help based on on this person's Sami indigeneity, and this person was questioned from the professional: Why do you need that, and wh what's the importance of that? So this person actually refrained from further services. Uh, after that, this person didn't want to be questioned about uh, the the needs based on um, the indigeneity as Sami. So it's important about that awareness and and respect your own less of understanding uh, and your own history and who you are, and also respect the person you are facing. That is that's basic in social work and and I think also in health care. Um, besides um, being professional uh, at the university, I have also, uh, I'm also a social worker and I have been working in social work for more than 30 years, um, both in social uh, service system and also in the, uh, in healthcare. So, uh, and I have faced a narrative uh, I didn't understand uh, and I think it's important to respect that, uh, especially persons who have, who have uh, lived through trauma. Respect that you can't not fully understand if you haven't been through the same trauma yourself. It's okay. So thank you. Um, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, and shortly I will say that respectfully inclusion includes listening, being aware and accepting that you might not fully understand the individual's narrative and needs. And actions based, should be based on respect for the individual's own being and in integrity. And there are still indications for development of service and support based on respectful inclusion. So thank you, that's my last words. Any questions? Anyone? So thank you, Margareta. I'm sorry I was thrown out of the meeting. So thank you for the nice presentation. Um, I think that what you've been describing, it sounds not so very difficult on the one hand, and on the other hand, it sounds very difficult. 
uh, to uh, working in the healthcare myself. Uh, and I have the feeling that we always try to help people and try to understand. And through that, we try to give help. Uh, so uh, I was thinking that this must be very important to uh, introduce into the different care, uh, the young persons training to different care professions. Are you aware of that uh, that is happening in Sweden now? Um, I'm not sure uh, of um, every part of the welfare system, but I'm trying to teach um, future social workers this um, importance of the respectful awareness, um, respecting that we might all come from different cultures and uh, experiences. So, um, uh, I'm trying to do that, and I'm not sure how uh, how it looks in other areas. Um, but in social work, we are trying to to, um, to work with that in the education. Mm -hmm. So I think I mean that should be included at the national level, and also in other. Uh, yeah, I think so too, yes. be because many many patients many persons are not meeting a social worker they no. may meet a, a, a medical professional mm -hmm. that's uh, maybe the first person we want to see in healthcare for example yes. mm -hmm. um, or, or a teacher in school so uh, it's important i think in every areas mm -hmm. and so in society in the whole welfare system i agree so thank you very much margareta and now I will introduce the, the next speaker, uh, Associate Professor Per Axelsson, who will present uh, uh, a presentation that is done together with Kristina uh, uh, Stormiena, and they are both from Umeå Univers University. I think the presentation will be given by Per Axelsson only, and the title is Haldi, use of focus group discussions for developing a health study in Sápmi, Sweden. Please, Per, welcome. Thank you, Boris. Thank you, Katarina, and thanks for the invite. Yes, uh, Christina could, unfortunately, I had to, had just needed to be somewhere else at the moment. Um, so I've been doing this presentation by myself, but this is very much a something we've done together. So I've been asked to speak about uh, the use of focus groups in developing a health study in SAPME in Sweden. And uh, the title says HALDI, and HALDI is a research project uh, that has um, a, a funding that we will present and thank, thank later. But uh, it's, uh, it's an ongoing project where we early on decided to gets uh, a broader view on how we should understand health uh, in general in in, um, in Sápmi in the north part of Sweden. Um, as we all know it's a well-known problem. Um, official statistics and other health data um, in on the Swedish side and I think it's the same thing in, in Finland and Norway at least uh, does not include ethnicity in any way, uh, making Sami people invisible or, or Swedes, uh, basically, in, in that regard. Um, but in research, there has been development, especially on the Norwegian side, where health studies have included ethnicity questions. And uh, one of the most well known and uh, our inspiration is the Sami News study from uh, Tromsø that we have collaborated with to do a health study that both include a questionnaire and a clinical health examination. And it's not a SAMI health study in particular, it's a health study in SAPMI that also includes SAMI and non-SAMI. So it, it goes on to invite everyone in the specific municipality that we um, visit. So, uh, but 
To prepare for that questionnaire and to prepare for the clinical study, we felt it was very important to understand some people's experience and opinions about health, science, medical care, and so on and so forth. And we used then uh, focus groups to start up the project. Um, and this was done in uh, 2018 and 19 and uh, has been very important for the Jokmok pilot study that is ongoing at the moment, uh, where we've sent out the questionnaire and we just got the data back and that we plan for a study in 20, uh, next year to do the clinical study. Pre-COVID, of course, we wanted to do this at the same time, uh, but instead we, we were forced by, by the COVID-19 pandemic to, to change our plans. But the focus groups was to start up and to us to understand and include some perspectives in, in ongoing health service in general. So it's a, it's, it's a three-stage project uh, where we plan to evaluate the project after we've done the clinical study as well and make it available to, to other Swedish municipalities, just like the Sominu study has done. And here are um, important people and, and that I'm very grateful to, to them for participating in this study. Um, there are uh, um, doctors and nurses from, from Jokmok municipality. Uh, Katarina Nega herself, uh, that is the moderator here, is also part of the study, which we are grateful for. And then Christina and I. Um, but for the data collection for the specific focus groups, we had to recruit uh, more people and they were, we are very grateful for their participation and helping us do the health study. So um, health studies in, in general is a, um, a oh, sorry, focus groups in general is a way of uh, researching a research technique that through interaction around a specific topic, um, create an environment where uh, invited participants um, discuss and uh, try to answer or, or discuss the different topics that have been uh, put forward on the table. And it's um, also, um, in, it starts off with uh, participants uh, being uh, signed um, an informed consent and then you uh, get the group to start discussions on, for instance, in our case, what health questions are important for Sami in the north of Sweden? What, what, what should we not forget to ask if we make a health study in your municipality, for instance? Or questions around how should we define ethnicity in, in, in health surveys or in general in the, health Swiss, in the Swedish health system? Um, um, in our case, we started off by doing um, an interview guide and tested them, tested that at UMI University at the Center for Summer Research um, that helped us develop the interview guide further before we invited people to, to sign up for our focus groups meeting. Um, but we opened this investigation in 2018 and this is what we are basing our, our research on. Uh, in the end, uh, 11 focus groups uh, occurred in uh, all over Sápmi, you could say, on the Swedish part, from the south, uh, south part of Jämtan Heridalen and through Västerbotten and up to Norrbotten. Uh, 51 participants, uh, majority of women, people from different uh, variety of, of occupations. And um, there were, the age span was from uh, 30, 23 to 77. And uh, discussions in those focus groups were mainly in Swedish, but we had group uh, a group where that uh, spoke North Sami. And then we, every focus group, um, we recorded and then uh, transcribed the recordings 
for further analysis. That, and in that case, we used content analysis, which is a well-known uh, qualitative research method. Um, so what, how did our results uh, improve our health study? What was, what, what were the main points to, that we had um, addressed by, by the focus groups? Well, there's a lot of things, of course, and, and um, I'm just highlighting a few of them here. Um, but it was very clear that communication, information, organization, um, stuff that before you start a health study or when you do a health study, it's very important to communicate with everyone in, that you are, are expecting to address on different levels and also inform why you're doing this and how should I as a participant um, get feedback? How will I be part of this? And what, what is the intent of, of, uh, of, those, uh, of this investigation? But also an organization as a research group to involve Sami participants is very important, uh, came up in the, in the focus groups. Um, and we also, there were some topics, topics that came up that also made um, adjustments in the survey. And when I say the survey, I mean the survey that we built on uh, from the Sominu study, especially, and then also other health studies that are normally used in, in uh, epidemiological questionnaire studies like, like ours. Um, and we, for instance, included uh, discussions on nature, because that came out very strong um, as something that should be asked about the importance of, of a more holistic view of health and the role of nature uh, is something that we addressed in, in the questionnaire. Um, elderly studies were also um, included or are also included in our future work and that came also out in, in the focus groups. Um, understanding of ethnicity. Well, uh, there are there have been studies prior to ours, uh, of course, um, and ethnicity in the Swedish context, and I guess that is the same in, in Norway and, and Finland also perhaps, is, is quite a sensitive topic, and how you ask about it is very, um, it's also very, it's, it's, a, it's also a sensitive topic. So uh, the, what was expressed through these uh, 11 focus, group, focus groups were that ethnicity should just be a simple question. Um, not use uh, language, uh, not use um, uh, prior registers like, like um, some parliaments voting registers or, um, well, the people need to self-identify and they just want a simple question such as what is your ethnicity or are you Sami or something very, very straightforward. Uh, another point that came out very strong is the problem uh, with science and the history of science in the Sápmi region. Um, colonization, we are well aware of, of the effects of that and uh, the research made in the name of science historically is uh, very much on the dark side. Um, so that came out that many, many people were afraid about being part of studies or um, being part of the registers in any form uh, because they were afraid that it would be used against them, not for, uh, for the benefit of, of uh, some of people in Sweden. Um, so that was um, that was some of some of the um, parts that that came up. But we will be continuously reporting on this, of course. So uh, to sum up, uh, focus groups in this case have been, and I think that goes for for many health studies, has been important in a, in our work to understand what some people would like to see researched, what is important 
in this case to include in a health study that also includes Sami people. Uh, it also have been important how we should research it, uh, how we should organize ourselves, how we how we work with with um, uh, information and so on and so forth. And last but not least, there were also expectations on what research might lead to. Um, and, and these have been all important for our studies that we are doing at the moment in, in Jokmok. So uh, I want to thank everyone from the, from the Halde group, uh, of course, but also those that participated in the focus groups, especially. especially. And, and funding. And you can see some of our publications down on the right side. Thank you. So thank you very much, Pad. And uh, uh, I don't have so many questions myself uh, to you. We have discussed this as we are research colleagues in the same project. So, but I, I thought, because we don't have any questions in the chat, could you say something about uh, how we uh, plan to go on with the, with the clinical part and how it links to dementia, for instance, or uh, old age? Uh... Oh, that's a, that's, a, that's a good question. <laughs> Thank you, Katarina. Well, um, of course, we, we need to first see if, if we can um, well, we want to make a, a clinical study next year in Jokmok, where, where a special design um, will be uh, devoted to, to the elderly. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I guess you can expand on that, but we will, have a, uh, we will highlight that, I guess, because that's not part of the Sami Nu study in, in a high regard. So this will be an addition to this sort of epidemiological mm -hmm. study that, that we are uh, pursuing. Yes, and I think that's a very important uh, complement because there is really no old age, I mean, there are some old age studies in the indigenous context in Sweden, but uh, uh, not, not really in the dementia field. So, so uh, that's what we will try to do. Uh, yes. So thank you very much, Per. And uh, now we have uh, the next presentation already on the screen. So I'd like to uh, present uh, Elna Sönder, Elna Söndergård, who is a physiotherapist at Pisalsarfik, the nationwide disability center on Greenland. And uh, the title of the presentation is Pizar Safik, a modern and adapted rehabilitation center for persons with disabilities in Greenland. Uh, please, Elna, welcome. Uh, Elna, you have to put your microphone on. Nice. So? Yes, thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. I'm very proud to be allowed to present Pisasafik at this seminar. And actually, I have taken out modern and uh, adapted from the, from the title because, of course, it is adapted. We are in Greenland and it, it's a new center, so of course it is modern. So I have made it to an, a nationwide rehabilitation center for persons with disabilities in Greenland. And I'm Elna Sunago. I work as a physiotherapist in Pisasafik. And Pisasafik is the first and only center of its kind in Greenland and perhaps in the Nordic country. I don't know. What's going on here? Um, so why do we have such a unique center for citizens with disabilities in Greenland? Greenland is, as you probably know, a very large island with a small and scattered population. We are approximately 57,000 inhabitants with 19,000 in the capital of Nuuk and the rest located in five larger cities with a population between 5,000 and 2,000 inhabitants each. And then there are even smaller towns and all the settlements, which are down to 50 inhabitants. 
And in fact, in Greenland, we have settlements with even fewer people. So instead of sending 11 million Danish crowns around to 11 locations in Denmark and Greenland, it was decided to create Pisasafik as a nationwide center. The population is 85% is Kalashlit, Greenlanders, and the last 15% is foreigners and primarily Danes. The language in Greenland is Greenlanding, and it's the Inuit language spoken by most people in the Arctic. In Greenland, there are three main dialects, North, East, and West. And in addition, there are sub-dialects. The East Greenlandic dialect in particular is different from the others, but most of the people do understand the different dialects. West Greenlandic is the official language. In the administration, both Greenlandic and Danish is of, uh, official language. And why is it not only Greenlandic? The education area is in rapid development in Greenland. So as more people are educated, more become, more position will be filled with Greenlandic speaking people. In Greenland, you can educate yourself to become a social worker, a pedagogue, teacher, nurse, health assistant, interpreter, and more. To become therapist, psychologist, and doctor, you have to go abroad. And therefore, and because of the Riesfeldes gap, the Commonwealth with Denmark, we have Danish employees in the healthcare system. Because Greenlandic is a very difficult language to learn if you didn't grow up with it, we Danes, we depend very much on skilled interpreters. I've been in Greenland for more than three years and I still just know common phrases, some words and small sentences. Pisasafik opened in February 29, 2019 as a white, nationwide center. At the same time, the disability spokesperson institution Tiliok was opening. Tiliok works with rights for persons with disability. The 1st of January 2020, a new law on support for persons with disability was enrolled. And the law redefined who has a disability and now covers all persons, regardless of age, who have a permanent physical, mental, intellectual, and sensory disability, which in interaction with various barriers can pre prevent them from fully and effectively participating in society on the same terms as others. And I think we heard that quote before today. And the task of Pisasafik are included in this law. So our tasks are to carry out habilitation and rehabilitation for citizens with disabilities, guidance and advice on disability and support options for citizens with disability, relatives, professionals, and politicians. We have to arrange courses for citizens with disabilities, for relatives, and for professionals. We have to gather information and build knowledge on topics related to disability. Who are we? The staff at Pisasafik is a center manager, two pedagogues, two interpreters, an office assistant, a kitchen lead, a cleaning assistant, a janitor and driver, and they all speak Greenlandic and Danish. Furthermore, we are two physiotherapists and two occupational therapists who only speak Danish. We have a vacant position as a speech therapist. At Pisasafik, we receive citizens, children, young people, adults with disabilities from all over Greenland. Citizens who have completed their rehabilitation in the healthcare system, citizens for whom the training offered by the municipality no longer apply, and citizens who need a boost more to move forward in their development. The social worker in the municipality is our closest partner. They make the reference to Pisasafik in collaboration with the citizen. Right from the beginning, the social worker has focused on the goal for the stay at Pisasafik. What does the citizen want to achieve? With the referent, we also get information about the citizen's health condition, work, and plans for the future. 
At Pisasapic, we invite the citizen for a stay at typically of typically 14 days. We know rehabilitation needs much longer time and the 14 days are for practical reasons. The citizen must bring a companion, parents, a spouse, or a professional caregiver. We have no staff at nights and weekends on Pisasafik. 14 days is a reasonable and manageable, manageable time for the citizen and the person of support to leave their homes, kids, jobs, and schools. We actually have had citizens who had to cancel the stay because the caregiver couldn't find anyone to take care of their own kids. Our experience is that we do achieve results from the training within two weeks through an intensive effort. In cases we don't, the stay can be extended for one week. Another solution is to let the citizen return for a follow-up process in two or three months, after two or three months. The stay is free for the citizen. The municipality covers the caregiver salary and diets, as well as any lost earnings for the citizen and companions. Pisasafik covers travel expenses, as well as accommodation and meals during the trip, which in cases can last more than three days, and at Pisasafik. The citizen meets with Greenlandic speaking staff in the airport and the pedagogues welcome them at the center. The first meeting with the therapists is later when they have settled in and with an interpreter. Again, the therapist asks about the purpose for the stay at Pisasafik. Some citizens are clear about what they want to work on. For others, it's new to talk about how they are with their challenges and what they want to improve. It's important to us that the citizen feels, feels responsible for the rehabilitation. Actually, the point is also found in the name Pisasafik. Pisasafik is the place where the Angagok, the spirit man, goes to gather strength, energy, and tools, both physical and mental. And that's exactly what we want the citizen to do here at Pisasafik. The pedagogues have a very close connection with the citizens throughout the stay, and they have conversations with the citizens about home condition and wishes and concerns for the future. It's of great importance to the citizens to have these conversations in Greenland. The pedagogues get very close with the citizens and bring up conditions of great importance for the rehabilitation and for the citizens' future. Many go through a personal development in the two weeks they're here. They become aware of their own challenges and opportunities. They experience on their own body that they are able to do more than they think they can. We do meet citizens who think we are going to fix them. Some arrives like this, very bent over, but after they've been met, seen and heard, they go out like this. And that's when we love our job the most. So the goals and the schedules for the training is done in cooperation with the citizen. For the content of the training, we use our professional knowledge. The companion or caregiver participates in the training at Pisasafik. So she or he knows how to support the citizen at home. At the center, we have modern training facilities that are not found around the countryside. Therefore, the citizen receives a training program for home training, which is adapted to the local conditions. In the larger cities, there are, physio ther there are therapists to follow up when the citizens come back home. In the smaller locations, there are no professionals. So therefore, the citizens must be able to continue the training themselves. We ask a lot about the options in the local environment. How is your home furnished in relation to getting to the toilet yourself? What aids are needed? And is there enough space for them? Do you have access to a exercise? Do we have access to an exercise bike, a sports arena with a gym? Where in your home can you use training elastics? Are the roads suitable for rollators, et cetera, et cetera? 
from traveling, we do have knowledge about the conditions in Greenland, but we know far from all conditions. So we ask and ask and ask. And Margaret, I, Margareta, I was very inspired of your uh, thinking about listening and not always fully understand why we are doing things. I think that's a very important point. So at Pisasafic, we have rooms for four citizens and their companion or caretaker at the same time. We try to organize the group so we think the citizens have something in common, persons with hemiplegia and their spouses, children at the same age, young people with autism. We have seen many new connections and networks emerged. After the stay, we prepare a report for the social worker in the municipality with a description of the goals, the process, and what the citizen has achieved. We also come up with suggestions for measure. It's the social worker in the municipality who decides which measures are implemented. They are the ones paying for the expenses. We also have a travel team consisting physiotherapists, occupational therapists, and pedagogues. The travel team visits the citizens in their own environment. We meet with family, caregivers, teachers, social workers, etc. We meet the citizen in action at home, at work, at school, and make suggestions for measure. Guidance and advice take place via emails, phone, and in person. We respond in the language the caller uses. And here, of course, the Therapists, again, are dependent on our skilled interpreters. We do, when Ms. Corona does not cancel, two courses for professional and two courses for citizens with disabilities per year. It's difficult to get trained caregivers and the lack of professionalism means that there is a high turnover, which is a major regret and irritation for the citizen. Therefore, our courses focus on untrained caregivers. The courses for the citizen have an academic, but also a social content. The topic and the target group change from course to course. We have had inclusion in education and work for citizens who wants to go back to education, who wants to get into education or work again. And we have had the hidden disability for citizens with acquired brain injury. With a scattered settlement, many lack contact with equals in everyday life. Therefore, we also focus on networking. Still, there's a long way to go, as Maria said yesterday, before everyone participates equally in society. We want even more focus on the conditions for people with disabilities in Greenland, more knowledge about the barriers persons with disabilities meet in society every day in their everyday life. Except from the publications from Tiliok, there's very little information in Greenland about issues concerning disabilities. We are about to hire an information officer to produce material in Greenland. That could be about diagnosis, age, teaching methods for kids with special needs, etc. Here at Pisasafek, we make an effort and a big difference to the individuals who come here. And hopefully our work together with the work of Tiliok, Meek, and the organizations, that will make the ring spread. Goeienaar. So thank you very much, Elna, for this nice presentation. Um, oh. I was wanting to ask you, uh, do you cover the needs from the, from the population? If it's four persons at a time, do you have a long waiting list to get to, to your uh, rehabilitation center? At the moment, we don't have a long list. Mm -hmm. And I think that's due to Corona, but it's also due to that the, um, social workers in the municipality 
not always know about the possibility for sending people to Pisa. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, I just would like to congratulate you because it seems like very important and pioneer work that you are uh, that you have done together with with your colleagues and covering many different fields. And I was going to ask about uh, uh, language, but you you uh, presented that as well that you will try to engage uh, someone who will work on on information in Greenland. Yeah. So I don't think that we have any more questions from the chat. So now there will be a, sh a short break and uh, we will come back at uh, three o'clock. So welcome back everybody after the coffee break. I hope you've all had have had some time to reflect a bit on the previous uh, speaks and, uh, and and what we have learned so far. Um, now uh, we have the last sessions and uh, I would like to start with uh, uh, introducing Jana Hota, who is the senior ministerial advisor at the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health in Finland. And the title of uh, her talk will be Perspective on the Development of Services, Reform of Services for Older People and Persons with Disability in Finland. Uh, please, Jana, welcome. Thank you very much of your nice introduction and good afternoon, everybody. It is a pleasure for me to be able to give you a, a short look, a brief look to this uh, development of services which is going on in Finland, especially the reform of the services for older people and persons with disabilities in Finland. <clears throat> I'm talking, maybe these uh, slides are on quite a common level, but I try to connect my speech to this team which has been very important and I'm, I'm, I'm already now I want to thank everybody who has been uh, preparing this uh, webinar and who has been participating. It, it has been a very very good seminar and given much information also uh, for me when I go home and start again this legislation reform process uh, and my work. So First, um, I have divided this to two uh, parts. So first I will speak about uh, reform of, of the legislation concerning older person services and also the development of the services, some words, because I want to re remind the fact that legislation only can do the part of the thing and it's never alone enough. So we need many other actions and, and, and processes so that the implementation of the legislation is correct and gets to those uh, uh, objects and aims that is uh, put to it. And as we have here heard, uh, it is very important from the point of, the, for example, Sami people and other in ingenious people to bear in mind that the special characteristics concerning uh, culture and, and l uh, language are very important in the implementation of the law, of the legislation, and in uh, when organizing the services. Uh, in Finland we are always quite dependent on our government program, um, which is four years time uh, between the elections and now we are in the halfway of this current government program and I'm uh, happy to say that uh, this program contains uh, quite much, quite many uh, 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 things about uh, older persons, uh, services and rights especially and also also of persons with disabilities. But concerning, concerning older 
persons, the aim of the program, government program, which we are now making real in our work at the ministry, is that Finland becomes an age-friendlier society that is prepared for the societal change following the aging of the population. And the aging of the population is, I believe, fact in all Nordic countries, and it, is, it makes big challenges uh, from, from many point of views. But it can be tackled uh, with the work uh, also ver done very broadly in society. And the aim of the development work is, of course, uh, beforehand maintain older persons or every person's functional capacity and thus increase the amount of healthy years that is important to everybody of us and also increase the right timing and effectiveness of the service system when services are needed. And I wanted to also uh, notice the uh, point concerning linguistic rights, so securing linguistic rights in practice in the health and social service system, that means Swedish, Sami and sign language, those in Finland, should be noticed in every respect and in all, uh, all actions. Uh, some words about the legislation uh, concerning older person services in Finland. We have a special law called, it's a very long and quite little difficult name, Act on Supporting the Functional Capacity of the Older Population and on Social and Health Services for Older Persons. And that's why we usually call it Old Age Services Act. Though that name is not quite right for the law because it does not uh, content, contain uh, services actually, but the object of the law is, very gener uh, is, to, is to ensure the access to services at the right time and as well as sufficient and necessary services. Also, it, there are uh, things about uh, principles about the uh, quality, leadership and staff, adequate staff at the law. Services then are based on needs and their assessments and granting of the services are regulated on common legislation, uh, on, on legislation concerning social and health care. Also, also, that means common and special legislation that we have. And as uh, Sanna Hala here earlier today in her excellent presentation uh, told us very clearly, there are the premises of contest, contents and provision of services are also regulated by constitution, by fundamental rights and international human rights obligations as well as, for example, the legislation concerning client and patient rights. And this is very important, of course, to bear in mind when to thinking about also, for example, the rights to uh, linguistic and cultural rights also. Uh, we have had uh, this, uh, we are we're doing this uh, law reform of uh, Old Age Services Act in two phases and the first phase uh, we already have in, in force, it came, on, in, came into the force last uh, autumn and it, is, uh, it concerns about the 48 hours care, that means the care when uh, you, you can get services and care in every time of the day, day and night. And, and the objective of this law reform, as also this other part of the law reform, is to safeguard older person's constitutional right to essential care and adequate health and social services, which, is, which right is stated in our constitution quite clearly. clearly. <clears throat> and also, of course, to safeguard other fundamental rights as well. And also the objective of this first phase law reform, reform was to strengthen client and patient's safety, as well as client's equality in older persons 48 hours care that is done uh, by minimum staffing levels in older persons 
48 hours care units is laid down in law and also uh, unit staffing structures and competencies are laid down in law. And this uh, legislation is now in force, but this uh, minimum <coughs> staffing levels uh, is coming into force uh, gradually, so in the full effect uh, 0 0.7 workers per patient, per, per client, it should be in force uh, in the beginning of uh, 20 and, uh, 2024, 23, sorry, 23. Also, the instrument uh, RAI system, uh, resident assistance instrument, which is a tool to enable better planning, monitoring, assessment and development of care of elderly persons also used in, in the care of uh, uh, in services of persons with disabilities. But now particularly in this law, we're talking about the older persons uh, assessment, service assessment, uh, service assessment that is uh, laid down in law and it should be also taken taken to use uh, until this beginning of uh, 2023 it is the ria uh, system this instrument is already used in in many municipalities and and that is now not not just just a new thing in in practice actually uh, the institute for welfare and Health is the uh, expert in this RAA uh, use, and the the no, more information of that can be get from from there. <clears throat> then the other phase of the law reform is, which is now currently uh, actually very actively going on. We just is is the uh, concerns home care and its objective is to improve older persons' possibilities to live at home safely and to ensure access to services that correspond to their needs so that they can live their own home. They, hopefully though, so that they can live there where they self want what is the best for them. Uh, <clears throat> that uh, contains ensuring the adequacy and quality of home care and increasing also the rates of options for accommodation and services. So we have now, this is quite limited in our legislation nowadays, so we hope to get more options, more flexibility to the uh, housing services so that um, actually the elderly persons, old persons, can themselves decide where they live, and they don't have that. They don't uh, have to move when their uh, need for services comes bigger, grows. And of course, the objective of this second phase law reform is also to ensure the adequate amount of stuff. This is a crucial question, as we have discussed here these two days. Uh, and it is the thing that is only in a limited uh, amount uh, could be done by, by legislation. There are other things that, that affect to the amount of stuff or that, that the persons um, who are working on the social and health care, that they come to the field and that they stay there. But there are in this our, our proposition, there are uh, some points which we want, uh, wish that should uh, affect that uh, the staff, people working in this field, also feel can feel their work uh, ethnically good, that they can do it in an ethnic, ethnically good way, good manner, because this uh, so-called ethical burden in in the range of social and health care, especially now when we're talking about the elderly uh, care, is very, uh, very uh, common and has been now raised to the discussion. 
we have just got those um, statements of this second phase uh, proposition and we are hoping to get it to the government proposal to the parliament in the end of this year and this law will also come to force then in um, 2023 at the same time actually when our uh, social and healthcare reform uh, and enters into force after that reform we do not have municipalities corresponding uh, responding about the services but we have welfare services counties much less in number than nowadays uh, then there are also as i mentioned that um, legislation is only one tool and one element of the whole picture how to enhance, uh, enhance uh, well-being and functional capacity of elderly persons. We have also these four elements. Uh, we have national aging program continuing till uh, 2030. Very broad and uh, broad program where many different stakeholders are involved, many different ministries, many different other stakeholders. We have quality recommendation concerning services for older persons uh, for three or four years period. This we got last uh, autumn. And then we have the, these two programs, which uh, this first one, Future Health and Social Service Centers program is already ongoing. And then we will open this, this autumn uh, a program uh, uh, de for development of service supporting living at home. So these both uh, big programs, which mean that uh, government is giving money to the municipalities for the development of the services, uh, aim very much to the implementation of the reform of the social care and health. Uh, which then come into force 2023. And uh, as I, I'm, I'm, I believe, I, I think, or I know that also uh, Lapland and Sa also uh, Sami people are involved in, for example, in this Future Health and Social Cent uh, Services Center program. And of course, the possibilities for the uh, to develop development home care in this uh, program to become it's very important that uh, also this northern area of finland and the sami sami area should be involved in those in those uh, in that program I think I'll now uh, have to skip uh, some uh, more information about uh, these. Um, uh, there are some other points of the uh, National Aging Program and the impact calls. But they are very much um, the same as I've already mentioned from our uh, governmental program. I want to pick up from this slide this, uh, uh, about digitalization and new technologies have improved well-being. This is the thing we have discussed in this, uh, in this seminar, that this is very crucial here in, in the Sami area. How, really, how to make this real, how to not be in a situation that this is only a nice talk, nice talking. And, but as I, we uh, yesterday discussed with Risten Rauna, uh, so this is the future anyhow. We, we need this uh, to be happen also here in Sami area. <clears throat> uh, then this uh, quality recommendation, it's uh, qu very much follows the thematic area of the National Aging Program and it's uh, it's not, we have already before have quality recommendations. It's a tool for the uh, implementation of the law and it contains examples of good practices. And it's of course also meant to support the functioning uh, of the uh, so older 
Age Services Act and also now its reforms. <clears throat> And this is about this Future Health and Social Services Centers program. Some words that regional development projects are carried around Finland. So, in of course, in those projects which are carried out in, for example, here in, in the Sami area and in Lapland, the characteristics need to be taken account. And I'm sure they also take into account because there are local actors doing it. Now, some words about then uh, about the pre pre preparation of our new disability services act these uh, starting points i i again refer to the good presentation of sanna so so and this of course is also the basis of our disability policy in finland also now and and the core principles come from from fundamental rights and um, human rights and also from the CRPD. Equality, non-discrimination, inclusion in society, participation of persons with disabilities and their organizations, self-determination, independent living, individual services and support. And this very much also concerns then uh, Sami people too. And the purpose of this law to be, and also I can say the purpose of our current uh, Disability Act uh, is to implement uh, equality, inclusion and participation of the person with disabilities in society, to prevent and remove obstacles to their realization, uh, support the independent life of persons with disabilities and the realization of self-determination and safeguard services for persons with disability that are in, in the interest and individual of individual needs and interest sufficient and good quality. So this is not very... But um, though we have these uh, elements in our current law, which is now already from quite old, so we, of course, take especially CRPD principles very carefully and deeply, bear them in deeply in mind when uh, preparing this law. And this uh, uh, law reform is, uh, is a very long process. And now we again hope that we can get to, get to the goal with it. We still have quite much to do, so we uh, wish to give the government proposition, pro proposition um, to the parliament in the time of one year, next next autumn maybe, because uh, this will mean that we get for a completely new special law, which applies equally to the different disability groups, so we don't anymore have a diagnosis in the ground uh, of the uh, uh, arranging services at all. So this means quite much work still to do, uh, but we still then we have this our social care and health reform at the same time when this new law should be in force. And here one point, uh, one point still, some points still uh, that uh, as also, or also now this uh, legislation, special legislation is meant to safeguard necessary special, special social care services in a situation where a person with disabilities doesn't receive essential services in accordance with their individual needs as general services. So this special law is always something stronger, objective, subjective rights in it. And the needs is a starting point. Services are not based on diagnosis, so assessing needs, service needs need is uh, very crucial. And of course, then again, we have talked about this, how uh, particular things have to be taken care of when, when thinking about Sami people's culture, language and, and living conditions. So it's, it really uh, demands professional skills and understanding very much also. Uh, we also have this uh, important question, which also have been uh, here in the discussions, also the interface between disability and the high age. This is anyhow special 
law and and as as i already in the begin beginning told about the principles of ar arranging services uh, to all persons of course it's the, the general general law is the starting point uh, we um, have i'm just so john uh, i think that uh, we need to thank you yep. because you okay. have I'm sorry. Yes. one last presentation. Yes. I lost some minutes, and, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I'm also very sorry about that. But I think that many are interested in trying to not uh, be too late uh, for the seminar. Uh, so it, it was a very interesting presentation on, on the different perspectives of development on services covering legislation and resources and the importance of including Sami persons in the latest steps. So thank you very much for that, Jana. And so as the last speaker for today, I would like to present Rista Rana Manga, uh, who is executive director of Sami Sister in Finland. And uh, uh, the name of the talk will be Recollection of Future Services. Please. Uh, Listen round Apo ei nuo, mitä uusia furkettaan seminaara programma selki hoina leema ja nuppi nuppa ja huohkali manai puures puori jauhja. Iimun vuorta laippa seeraa, namalla siin tuolla laistaa kui. Mis puohkain alle muhtu vaasan aikas, mutta sahtiikko mi muhtu, että me ei pohti vuoda. Tahko muhtui pohti vuodas. Olen tauja tatjana te nehkulle saavalta hellimi. Ta juurtele suutaan muu vain parkkuin. Mun joku ja muihtuu pohti vuodas le, a te pohta vielä tahki peivi, kos mi alku almakin lahtuu osalla ja oktoses kotis, mi vietä me halmaka lahtuu. Vasihu sai vuodun muista tjan, a te lamisol hei tarpeesti jahten. Sierra kaipii aalohjeita se kiela ja kulttuura vuhtii valtima palvelussa aiheuttavuodas. Sikkiälle paitsi laakituu voi siin tarppua miltä vehkii, vai si paste haltasi, että se heellima, eli saamme laitjan, tai he eraa aiemmin almukalla lahtuun. Kulttuura laitjaa torvolais pirraasis. Mun ana muihtuu le, ahti lakamusa ja omaat ja ei tarpeis kossikin heitä asnu vaan ja pallaa heitä se lakasolma päälles. Kos ei huu, mikä tuus jo, heitä se heitä kiela. Nuka outa merkka tihti muihto puhtsi olmus. Kille vajaltuhtaan valtoalmoka kiela ja kommunikasuun ole vaattis, mutta heitä se kiela ole vielä nanus. Tämä on saismiä, me ei ole kyllä lahtuille kulttuurilla ja torvalaispirraasissa. Palvelusaihe vehkis kahpoteetti miehtarpas johki aina haave siirra akkastalla. Mä niin mun haalien hukma heitoskielä. Mä niin min kulttuurilaispiras ja tuokaisverte valti vuhti. Ja mä niin min elinpiras ja kalkaa valta jo vuhti palvelusaihe laakitämis. Muista tämän päivää, kun ottaessa kotissa tjala huvon torvai, nukohtuvien positiiva siirra toima. Mä torvaasti palvelu sai laakita me min tarpeen mieltä. Ja nuohti, että hiljattuisi jo min killi, mutta maittai sistoalueen vuoki le heive huvon min kulttuurilais tarpeen. Tämä on kovaa, että ei ole ahti, että on saamelaiskin aina täällä, paitsi tuon aittiikolle torvaimaan kanssa tasa valtoivon ja pitkäivon vuolla. Tämä on ehkä positiiva takuu. Nuppi saanikkoon, minä vuorotin ahti palvelussa, että pitkälaista minä kulttuuri, minä arvoin, 
Ja nanni, minun osallisvuola oktaiskottis. Mutta niin kuin ei olla suva, jos mi se ei ole konkreettalaisi mihtoveri. Mä ei olla suhtiva puurimi ankirussa, mille houhtas viisaaseppo ja seuraaleppo kuin okta. Tahalle okta valta teema taveri kas ministeriaali Suoma Jolihan pai prukraamas ja kai koktetua koktelokii. Kun saavan ahtemi purke tai peivi, saakavuori, saakastallami ja jurtaki ja tahkaa tai tuohtan, tuolla olisi elimis, jos kuule veilaisvuola is miltä. Miankin rusjahta nouti ja te laaka nuppaastuuve, tässä laaka teostaille ja merksummi. Vaikka ei maitta ei tasaa, te stahtai pusesta, sille torvai peljemerkki on ruhtaa. Tai että toimaje. Ja ne kahti heissä valti outtivi toimaje. Mä olen heivehuvon ja mielmake killi ja kulttuuri. Mis kuule ja mis kahpu hietemais kuule jumi. Itäs etämme kiela ja kulttuura virraa. Ja minä nuppaastuhti palvelusai ja sierra tuoria toimaje. Haa minuu. Ahtahle huokaidahton, min kulttuuri, min elinpirrasi. Mi lasi reuhtis ja aikakoutilis aasi ja tiedu alkoi alkoi pirraa. Ja mi vaihkoi tasa, ahte positiiva jurta se mi jämi alkoi pirraa lassana. Torvaasti jämi alkoi lahtu ja puori elima. Mi tarpe hyhti kuassa jahtentan. Vassi saaka kulla, kun mille hemiel muka lahtui ja tarpeeksi palvelu sai. Ja nuupa mi vel oin ihtaankin päivä. Ahtele iäisältis kielkkas. Ahte vel valtoalmoki. Almoka lahtei miikkuun outavertaasatja. Mistä kulttuurilat ja torvolais elinpiras. Ja emiel mukitta kullevas laamisolmuin. Ne sema voikafuola ja veilasvuola hellimisko era olmuin. Kiihtuu tämä on mielenkiintoinen seminaari saakkavuoruin ja saakastallamin. Ja mun haastalla min puhka ei parkahtan outi, ahtetaan holla suuve. Puori parkomouhta, min elämijalmakin kulttuurilais elinpirrais ja outaneamai. Ja puoli jauhti puhka. So thank you so much, Jurista Ramna, for this very nice talk and also for adjusting to our delayed time schedule. That was excellent. Um, so I don't see any questions and I think that we are a bit late. So I will just uh, uh, finish up to say uh, very shortly that uh, today we have heard about challenges. Uh, but also about good examples from care and service providers and results from research, all focusing on different aspects of indigeneity for persons with disability or dementia in the Nordic countries. And I believe that we are now even more aware of the legislation that actually should favor the development of the field. Um, it has been interesting days, and I think that it uh, has been very inspiring for all of us to continue our work uh, for the rights of indigenous people within our own respective areas. So uh, finally, I will finish by thanking the organizers of this uh, beautiful seminar once again, uh, the Nordic Welfare Center, the Nordic Dementia Network, the Council of Nordic Cooperation on Disability, the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health, the Finnish Institute for Health and Welfare, the Sami Parliament in Finland, Sami Sester, the Advisory Board for the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, Vane, and finally the Finnish Human Rights Center. And last but not least, I want to thank all of you participating these two afternoons. And I really hope that we can meet uh, uh, under other circumstances. 
for the next time post COVID. So thank you all and have a nice evening. Goodbye.